Hey, how's it going? So I got another video, and this time I'm going to be talking about these two transmitters right here. They are both from FlySky, and this one is the FSGT5, and this one is the FSGT3C. Um, so first off, I'm going to tell you my rec recommendation straight off the bat, and it's going to be this one right here. It's the FSGT5. Um, they're both selling on Amazon. This one's going to be going for 80 This one's going to go for about $50. Um, you're going to find different prices, possibly, but um, they're going to be in that price range. And I want to tell you, this one is much, much better for the price. And uh, we're going to go over the reasons why. So the main reason I recommend this one over this one is because this one, um, right when I got it, it seemed like a pretty cool transmitter uh both of them are real responsive and uh i really like this one right off the bat but i quickly noticed um i'm using it for a basher vehicle so the range isn't all that great because um uh, with my bashers i do like to send them out of ways and uh this had a real real short range i actually took them both out today tested out the range with this range finder and actually decided to get a uh, good reading on how far it would actually go this one only went 75 yards about 70 to 80 yards so we're just going to average out call it 75 um and that is not very far at all that's pretty darn close and it's starting to cut out and it's losing reception um versus this one the gt5 i've actually ranged it out to 275 yards and it was still working just fine but after 275 yards, it was so difficult to see the vehicle, even looking at the vehicle through the magnification of the rangefinder, it was hard to see what the vehicle was doing. But uh, at 275 yards, it was still working just fine. So this one has 200 yards more range compared to this one at 75 yards flat. So there's the one main reason that I definitely recommend this one over this one. All right, so when it comes to responsiveness, both of them are incredibly good. I bought these to replace the STX2 from Spectrum that came with my 2019 Arma vehicle because that's what they come with now. Uh, but those transmitters are notoriously bad, so I decided to upgrade and bought this one. After the range issues showed up on this one, I went ahead and bought this one. But yeah, so I bought these specifically for a bashing vehicle, which obviously I'm going to need more range than 75 yards. But you guys with crawlers might be thinking this might still get you by. But there's a few other things that um, are so much better about this that I would still recommend just paying the extra money and getting this FS GT5. And we're going to go over those reasons right now. All right, so just to start off, uh, there just seems to be a few features with this one that just makes it a little bit better than this transmitter. Um, first of all, this one comes with a idle warning, so if it's been sitting for longer than five minutes and you haven't done anything with it, it starts beeping. Um, and I do that sort of thing all the time, so that's nice. Uh, another reason this one isn't as good is it's very hard to tell if it's on or off. I turn this one on. And I turn this one on, obviously you can tell both of them on because both of them are backlit, but this one has a indicator light. You can even change the color of the indicator light. Put that back to blue. Um, but yeah, after the backlight goes out on both of these, as you can see, it's kind of hard to tell this one is on. But this one, you can see that bright blue light and you can tell that it's on. So you're not going to kill the battery on it. Um, Speaking of batteries, it does tell you the voltage. If you scroll through here, you can see that it's got four volts versus this one, which has 5.6 volts. So there's another thing right there. Because of the two different types of batteries in this, this one's going to be, um, this one's going to have a higher voltage. So that might have something to do with the range and why it actually reaches out further. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, I like this one because of all of the protection of not killing your battery because it shows you that it's on and once it's been sitting idle for five minutes, it starts beeping. Versus this one, it only starts beeping once you actually already have low voltage. So 
that can be an issue. And uh, when it comes to low voltage, if you hit low voltage while you're out, um, another good thing is this one just takes your standard double A's. So I always keep four double A's in my backpack because all of my transmitters use the same power source and it's four double A's. So it's nice to have backups in the backpack. And that way, if they, if one of my transmitters runs out of juice, I just swap out the double A's and I'm good to go. Um, this one's a little different. It's got a standalone one cell lithium polymer battery. So if that one dies on me, I'm going to have to find somewhere to charge it, which is nice being able to charge it just like that. But um, it uses a pretty much a proprietary uh, battery. It's not your standard one cell battery. So yeah, if the transmitter dies on the trail, I'm going to have to recharge it. And there's not really any way I can have a spare. I don't think you can just go out and buy those batteries. So, as I said, uh, the GT5 has the uh, idle warning, as you can hear. It's going off right now. There's a sound. So, uh, yeah, this one has the idle warning. This one doesn't. Both of them do have a low voltage warning. Um, I have heard this one. It's pretty loud and obnoxious, and I'm pretty sure there's no way to turn it off. Um, so even if you're at low voltage and you want to run your vehicle, you're going to have to listen to this loud obnoxious beeping, which might not be a good idea to use a low voltage transmitter while you're running a vehicle. But um, I still haven't heard the low voltage uh, warning on this one, but supposedly it has one and that light is supposed to blink when it's low voltage as well. And it's supposedly also supposed to vibrate. So there's multiple ways it warns you that you do have low voltage. All right, so one of the obvious advantages of the uh, GT5 over the GT3C is the channels. Obviously, channel 1 and 2 are going to be steering and throttle, and channel 3 on the GT3C is just going to be right there, a single press button channel, uh, as opposed to the GT5. Uh, obviously, steering and throttle are going to be channel 1 and 2. Channel 3 is, once again, going to be a press button. Channel 4 is actually going to be three position switch, so there's one position two position, three position, and channel five and six are gonna be knobs, which you can go full positive or full negative or right back to neutral. And that's channel five and that's channel six right there. All right, now let's go over the settings. Um, so it's got model number and you have 10 different models that you can set and you can name each model with three letters. Uh, you can reverse all of the channels, all three of them. Uh, you got endpoint adjustments. I love endpoint adjustments. Um, my Arma actually didn't need any endpoint adjustment settings because it came perfect out of the factory, but every single other vehicle I've owned has needed endpoint adjustments. So um, you've got your trim standard, you got your dual rate standard. Um, you got your exponential. I love exponential. Um, it just allows you to uh, use your steering and throttle uh, with a little bit more finesse when you're actually just trying to give it barely any throttle or barely any steering. You're going to get finer adjustments, but when you actually do the full throw, you're going to get 100% of the steering and 100% of the throttle. So I like having ex exponential because it makes those fine adjustments much much easier so i like keeping both those at like 20 to 30 percent um abs i don't really use that um i'm not even sure how it works but both of them have it let's check the other transmitter now all right so now we got the gt5 and we pretty much got a lot of the same stuff so we've got the model we got 20 different models on this one so you can have 20 different models saved. You can name this one, but this one has four letters. You can name it with uh, the longer the better when it comes to that. You can reverse all six of the uh, channels. Uh, you got endpoint adjustments on, once again, all six of the channels. You got sub trim, dual rate. That's once again all six of the channels and dual rates only for channel one and two uh exponential 
uh, ABS. This one you have trim and sub trim. Fail safe, that's probably good for the nitro guys. I'm not sure if it really matters for the electric vehicles, but it's good to have for the nitro guys. Uh, this might be something people are interested in. You got crawl mode, so you can do the front steering. So when you steer only the front steers, then there's you can crab walk. And then you can also do four wheel steer. So if you turn right, the front wheels are going to turn right and the back wheels are going to turn left. So you're going to have better uh, steering radius. And turn that off. And one of the best parts about this is it's got SVC, which has to do with the gyroscope. It does come with a gyroscopic uh, receiver. So you do have gyroscopic compensation when it comes to steering and throttle. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't use it, um, but I'm sure it will interest a lot of you guys out there. Um, I have tried the gyroscope. It works. Uh, I just don't personally like to use it. So another thing when it comes to all the settings, it does have steering and throttle adjustments, uh, trim adjustments on the side of both remotes independent of the user interface. So you can get to the uh, steering and throttle trim pretty quickly if you need to get to it. And uh, I also wanted to say when it comes to the user interface, it is much easier using the GT5. Um, it's a lot more user friendly, uh, a lot more intuitive versus this one, which is pretty easy to use and it's really easy to get used to. But like this back and the end button get a little confusing. It feels like you should be using one when you should be using the other. It gets slightly confusing, but you learn it pretty quick and it's pretty easy to use in the end. Um, but yeah, like I said, either way I suggest this, if, if that extra $30 isn't an issue, then I would 100% go with this every time. But you know, if you're really on a budget, you could go with this. But like I said, it has a lot of range issues and it's got just got a lot of little things that I don't like. It doesn't have a idle warning to let you know that it's on. It does has absolutely no indication that it's on except for the backlight and obviously the writing on it. But once the backlight goes out, that writing is very difficult to notice. So once that backlight goes out, it just looks like it's off and it's going to be really easy to drain the battery. Uh, and obviously it does have low voltage warning. So after it gets to a certain voltage, it's going to beep its beep its head off to the point where you can hear it from the other room. So you're going to be able to turn it off and charge it. But it's just, it still irks me that it's very difficult to tell when it's on or off because of no indication light and the screen doesn't look all that different when it's on and off. Unless the backlight's on, but once that's off, it just doesn't, it's hard to tell that it's on. But yeah, so that's pretty much my review. Um, hopefully I covered everything I needed to. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and post down below and I will get to them as soon as possible.